Lu Sheng felt a sudden wave of concern. Despite the advancements in martial arts and the emergence of powerful experts in his world, humanity was still locked in a struggle against alien beasts, facing constant pressure and dwindling living space. However, amidst the bleak reality, Lu Sheng saw an opportunity. He realized that this world's failure didn't necessarily mean his world would meet the same fate. By absorbing memories, techniques, and scientific advancements from this advanced civilization, he could potentially make a difference in his own world's fight against the alien threat. His eyes regained their determination as he shouldered this heavy responsibility. The ruins of this devastated civilization had profoundly impacted Lu Sheng, prompting a shift in his mindset. While the city walls teemed with zombies, most were relatively weak, with only a few advanced monsters lurking within. Lu Sheng stumbled upon a house and entered, only to find it deserted. In the living room, a table stood in the center, adorned with scattered tableware. Lu Sheng couldn't help but imagine the family that once dined there, abruptly interrupted by the apocalypse. A sense of melancholy washed over him, not a single zombie roamed the premises, leading Lu Sheng to speculate that the occupants may have perished due to their frailty, perhaps not even meeting the criteria for zombification. Determined to uncover more about this world, Lu Sheng searched for records. However, the advanced civilization had long forsaken traditional books for more sophisticated means, leaving him empty-handed. Finally, he discovered a palm-sized, lead-gray disc on the desk, less than half a centimeter thick, bearing faint inscriptions. Suddenly, a softy sound resonated, followed by the disc emitting a faint blue light. The once dusty and lifeless room seemed to stir with vitality in the presence of this azure glow. Welcome to use, Tianhang Technology. A gentle female voice emanated from the disc as the blue light coalesced into the form of a female silhouette. It's really working. Lu Sheng exclaimed, excitement coursing through him. But amidst his astonishment, a revelation struck him, he recognized these characters. Parallel world? Or is there some connection between the two? He mused, his eyes gleaming with newfound understanding. Eager to learn more about this world, Lu Sheng addressed the hologram, please, retrieve the latest news information. Connecting to Skynet. The hologram announced before a failure message appeared. Connecting to the civilian database of Base 1359, it continued, this time successfully establishing a connection. The next moment, a vast array of information flashed before Lu Sheng's eyes. As he glanced around, the text enlarged wherever his gaze landed, presenting itself actively before him. On June 21, 11,024 in the military calendar, the number 2 main base successfully launched the 58th batch of life exploration spacecraft, targeting the Lyra galaxy. On July 12, 11,024 in the military calendar, Base 105 fell. On September 24, 11,024 in the military calendar, Admiral Sun Kang was successfully promoted to the 10th level star realm, becoming the 472nd 10th level star realm powerhouse in the history of the World Wushu League. Currently, the Vumang League has a total of 23 10th level star realm powerhouses. On September 30, 11,024 in the martial arts calendar, bases 114, 893, and 1,022 fell, and the World Martial Arts League will hold the 274th Grandmaster meeting at the main base of number 1. All sorts of information bombarded Lu Sheng's senses relentlessly. Tales of 10th level powerhouses, planetary colonization schemes, Grandmaster summits. As anticipated, the martial arts civilization of this world far surpassed that of his own, even delving into the realms of the 10th and 11th levels of martial prowess. Yet, amidst this brilliance, the predominant news that greeted Lu Sheng was the relentless cascade of martial arts-based collapses. The martial arts civilization here shines with unparalleled brilliance, reaching unimaginable heights, Lu Sheng mused, but it faces adversaries of unfathomable ferocity. Even the mightiest of 10th and 11th level martial artists struggle to shield humanity from the relentless onslaught of alien beasts. In time, they even resorted to abandoning their home planet, seeking refuge on a new habitable world. Yet, judging from the reports, Lu Sheng's gaze fell, and the once rapid flow of blue light information before him began to decelerate. Until the fall of base 1359, the exploration vessels launched yielded naught but disappointment upon their return. Lu Sheng lamented for them. Amidst the stark news, he discerned the desperation and grief of a once mighty civilization on the brink of collapse. Halting his perusal of the news, Lu Sheng instructed, retrieve the world's historical records. World historical data retrieval initiated. World data retrieval successful. Hearing at the newly unveiled message, Lu Sheng's eyes widened. In the inaugural year of the martial calendar, the northern expanse of the ancient eagle country, the southern reaches of the ancient lion country, 
the Eastern Territories, and the Western Dominions of the ancient Dragon Country. Fissured open, disgorging a multitude of beings from disparate realms. Dramatically, Lu Sheng's mind reeled as he absorbed the opening line of world history, feeling as though a weighty hammer had struck his consciousness, leaving it reverberating. Suspecting an error, he leaned in closer, scrutinizing each word intently. In the 34th year of martial arts, the world witnessed the birth of its first inner martial artist in the Galong Kingdom. Simultaneously, the establishment of the World Martial Arts League marked a significant milestone. In the 42nd year of martial arts, the martial arts classification system was instituted, with Mr. Yang Qianhe, a martial arts master from the Galong Kingdom, attaining the prestigious title of the first five-level master in the League. The 104th year of Budo. Lu Sheng sat on the ground, dazed. Known for his composure and inscrutable emotions, his face now betrayed shock and disbelief. Scouring through centuries of historical records, he discovered an unsettling truth, the events, figures, and occurrences mirrored precisely what he had learned in history class. The timelines, historical personages, and significant events, all identical. This world, and the world he had known. They were one and the same. The information he had just absorbed didn't depict the rise and fall of another world's martial arts civilization, but rather, the future of his own world. A future spanning 10,000 years ahead, the year 11,024 of the military calendar signifies the impending doom of the world I currently inhabit, destined to be obliterated in over 10,000 years. Consumed by the suffocating black mist, swallowed by the unrelenting onslaught of alien beasts. Lu Sheng's complexion paled as he struggled to accept this grim revelation. Mere moments ago, he had offered a silent tribute to the downfall of a once mighty civilization. Now, he realized he was mourning the future of his own civilization. It may not be definitive. Perhaps it's merely coincidence, or the workings of a parallel world. Lu Sheng whispered to himself, attempting to pacify his racing thoughts. He yearned for more evidence, more concrete facts to validate his suspicions. Turning his focus inward, Lu Sheng delved deeper into history, scouring for elusive clues buried within the annals of time. Lu Sheng tried learning about his own future first. His biography depicted a malnourished 28-year-old Lu Sheng, with sunken cheeks giving his face a gaunt and hollowed-out appearance. It further stated that he was a civilian who lived until the age of 28 and died a virgin. He had not amounted to anything or achieved anything in life. on Lu Sheng's brow as he responded, Create a user. Please provide a genetic blood sample. It was truly remarkable that Future Technology's optical brain required genetic blood samples for user authentication. Uncertain of its efficacy within the dream realm, Lu Sheng extended his index finger, allowing the hologram to bite it and draw blood. Just as Lu Sheng was beginning to wonder if the system had crashed, the optical brain emitted a crisp beep sound. However, instead of indicating the successful establishment of a new user, it declared. The human gene blood sample has been detected, initiating the Fireseed project. Connecting to number 1359 Fireseed Resource Library. Connection successful. Privileges enabled. In the next moment, a vast amount of information appeared before Lu Sheng's eyes. However, his future was altered on the day he entered the dream world, and now he was portrayed as a level 4 army man who lived for 37 years. Lu Sheng's bio further stated, graduated from Baihe No. 3 Middle School in Baihe City with first place, and he joined the military. After serving in the Tianan military region, Lu Sheng died at the age of 37 in August 334 on the battlefield of the Southern War Zone, unmarried. He died at 37 with the rank of lieutenant officer and had no outstanding contributions, just a few exploits. There is also a character's historical evaluation at the bottom of the data, which is marked with two stars. It corresponds to Lu Sheng's level 2 authority in the Fire Seed Resource Library. Lu Sheng took a deep breath, his eyes became extremely complicated. It was hard for him not to believe that this was the future he was about to face. Because the Lu Sheng in the data had exactly the same life trajectory as him before the age of 18. Even the sudden surge in strength more than 200 days before the college entrance examination was recorded. In the face of such weighty history, his sudden transformation from mediocrity to genius didn't even cause a ripple. To be precise, after his transformation, he wasn't considered a genius at all in the vast human race data. Because in the history of over 10,000 years, there were too many geniuses who were a hundred times, a thousand times. More outstanding than him, making it impossible to count them all. The so-called leaving a name in history could only be achieved by a select few. Lu Sheng speculated that his two-star evaluation might be attributed to the military exploits he gained after joining the military region, and his final sacrifice on the battlefield. 
However, if you count my practice and gains in the dream space, then I should have achieved far more than this. Two strong rays of light suddenly shot out from Lu Sheng's eyes. More than 200 days, more than 200 days of dreaming, more than 200 days of harvest. I don't believe I'm making that much progress. How can I, Lu Sheng, be only the 23rd in the city? My ranking should be nationwide, and my name should be known by more people. My future? Lu Sheng clenched his fists tightly, it must not only be that. Since it is the future, it can be changed. My own future can be changed, and so can the future of the human race. Immediately afterwards, Lu Sheng searched all the familiar people around him. As a result, except for his younger sister Lu Qing, whose historical evaluation reached one star, no one else could reach one star, and most of them had half-star or even no-star evaluations. If the human civilization in the future is going to perish, then I, Lu Sheng, will be the one who changes history and turns the tide. Lu Sheng looked at the words Fireseed Resource Library flashing blue light on the optical brain screen, and spoke calmly and firmly. I am the seed of fire, and I will surely start a prairie fire. At this moment, the depression, bewilderment, and disappointment in Lu Sheng's heart were swept away, replaced by unprecedented firmness and confidence. His temperament underwent a new transformation, and there seemed to be a flame burning in his eyes. Martial arts, one should go forward bravely. If the front is doomed to be a desperate situation, then forcefully carve out a way out in the desperate situation. This is Lu Sheng's belief. It was the next morning, and Lu Sheng went for the family breakfast. Lu Sheng, why didn't you change into your school uniform? Don't you have to go to school today? Lu Sheng brought pots of breakfast to the table and curiously asked Lu Sheng, who was sitting at the table in casual attire and eating breakfast. Lu Sheng picked up a meat bun casually, nodded, and said, Yes, the teacher said that you can choose to study at home in the future. Is there such a thing? Mom muttered suspiciously. However, she was working was rushing to work after breakfast, so she didn't have the energy to think too much and didn't ask any more questions. Lu Qing, who was next to her, originally wanted to say out of habit, I haven't heard that the third middle school has such a new regulation recently, but when she met Lu Sheng's dark and deep eyes, she forcefully swallowed back the sentence. This guy. Lu Qing took a bite of the bun in her hand. She thought to herself that her big brother had undergone more and more changes and was no longer mediocre and cowardly. Before, she just felt that Lu Sheng had become a little deep and mysterious. But today, Lu Sheng felt to her like a mountain, a piece of iron, a ball of fire. Sitting next to Lu Sheng, she even felt oppressed, unable to breathe. This feeling was too intense. Lu Sheng didn't pay attention to Lu Qing's strangeness. After he had a quick breakfast, he went back to his room to practice body training. Lu Sheng's cell phone rang, and it was an unfamiliar number. Lu Sheng, your scholarship has come down. Come to school this afternoon to get it, said the voice on the other end, confirming it was Zhang Zhenwu's call. Understood, Teacher Zhang, Lu Sheng replied. By the way, why weren't you in class today? We need to discuss your school attendance with your parents. Unfortunately, I had to ask for your private mobile phone number from your classmates. Zhang Zhenwu trailed off. Mr. Zhang, I don't have much time, so I can't waste any more, Lu Sheng interrupted, hanging up the phone without waiting for a response. Since returning from the dream last night, Lu Sheng's mentality had completely changed. Previously, he cautiously concealed his strength, afraid to reveal too much, and reluctant to let too many people know. He had many concerns, including difficulty explaining to his family, concerns about attracting unwanted attention, and the belief that rigid structures are easy to break. However, now Lu Sheng no longer dwelled on these thoughts. He only wanted to showcase his abilities and astound others. He believed that by demonstrating his talents, he could acquire more resources. He needed to ascend to the top as swiftly as possible and then find a way to alter the future. There was no time to waste. Additionally, Lu Sheng wanted to use this opportunity to test a theory he had been considering. Lu Sheng repeatedly practiced body exercises, combined with breathing techniques, again and again. His goal was to become stronger and shoulder the responsibility of saving humanity. The purpose was to exhaust his energy as quickly as possible, induce a sense of fatigue, and then enter the dreamland. When Lu Sheng finished the 27th round of body exercises, he was finally so tired that he collapsed on the ground, unwilling to move even a little finger. Drowsiness overtook him, and he gradually fell asleep. Upon opening his eyes, he saw the light brain in front of him at the same spot where he had left it yesterday. Lu Sheng skillfully accessed all the martial arts-related practice methods, insights, and notes that he could access within his authority. Querying. 
Soon, a vast amount of information appeared in front of Lu Sheng, densely packed and all related to martial arts. With over 10,000 years of accumulated knowledge and wisdom from countless individuals, even with Lu Sheng's authority at level 2, the amount of knowledge he could access was immense. After some thought, Lu Sheng continued, Screen, display the exercises most suitable for a first-level martial artist, and the most valuable content. Screening. The content decreased rapidly, leaving only three pieces of information in front of him. Stellar Body Forging Technique, a cultivation method created by Wang He, the 11th level powerhouse of the Wu Ming League. Natural Breathing Method, introduction to the exercises created by Yang Yi Zhou, the 11th level powerhouse of the Martial Arts League. Crystal Ideas, Cultivation Method Introduction Created by Duan Yi Feng, the 11th Level Powerhouse of the Wu Ming League. The Creator's List made Lu Sheng's eyes widen with excitement. Level 11. Level 11. Level 11. Today's martial arts experts in the world were only at the 9th level, but here were three legacies from 11th level experts. Although they were just introductory chapters, their value was immeasurable. All three exercises were included in the Fire Sea Project. Those strong men standing at the top of the martial arts league in the future likely anticipated the fate of their race. Yet, they could only preserve the essence of their lifelong learnings for future generations, never imagining that someone from the past would access their knowledge. The stellar body refining technique sets the human body as a miniature universe. When practiced to the depths, the martial artist's body density reaches an unimaginable level. Defense and strength become unparalleled, blood blazing like a star, majestic as a galaxy. The natural breathing method, combined with any martial arts practice, skyrockets progress. It allows warriors to achieve harmony with nature, vastly enhancing martial arts realms. The crystal view thought purifies the mind and strengthens willpower, delving into the mysterious realm of spiritual power in martial arts. Though the results of dream space practice cannot be realized in reality, practicing in the dream space accelerates real-world progress. Lu Sheng eagerly began practicing. Starting with a stellar body refining technique and natural breathing method, even at an introductory level, these exercises proved formidable. As Lu Sheng completed the final movement of the stellar body refining technique, his body trembled as if electrified. Intense pain and numbness swept through every fiber, even vibrating muscles and meridians. The combined effect was profound, akin to radio gymnastics magnified a thousandfold. Collapsing after practice, Lu Sheng's body lay motionless. Taking advantage of this time, he attempted crystal view thought. The concept, wonderful and mysterious, involved visualizing a crystal human form in the mind, purging impurities with each breath. Though difficult, Lu Sheng recognized its importance. Spiritual will matter greatly in martial arts. He knew a resolute warrior surpassed one with distractions. Thus, he embraced the challenge, even as he struggled to visualize. Seeking further aid, Lu Sheng inquired about tonics to replenish qi and blood for first-level warriors. A wealth of information appeared, including medicinal formulas and ingredients, easing his efforts. Recording prescriptions, Lu Sheng chose to awaken, armed with newfound knowledge. It stinks. As soon as Lu Sheng woke up, he caught a whiff of a strong odor. Hastily rising, he discovered his entire body coated in a layer of black, glossy sludge, the source of the foul smell. This is from the stellar body refining technique and natural breathing method. Though I only practiced them in the dream, some effects still manifest in reality. Lu Sheng realized he had underestimated the combined impact of these techniques. Rushing to shower, he glanced at the clock, it was almost time for school. Lu Sheng went to school to collect his sponsorship money. At least say hello to me first next time, Zhang Zhengwo reprimanded him as he handed over a bank card, expressing some dissatisfaction. Understood, Teacher Zhang, Lu Sheng replied calmly. Zhang Zhengwo wanted to say more, but seeing Lu Sheng's calm demeanor, he decided against it. Go, go, come to the school to report at least once a week from now on, Zhang Zhengwo waved his hands helplessly. Yes. Lu Sheng put away his bank card, turned around, and left. As Lu Sheng departed, Zhang Zhengwo felt an inexplicable feeling in his heart. It was a strange sensation that he couldn't quite articulate. If forced to describe it, Zhang Zhengwo could still understand the original Lu Sheng, Lu Titi now he found himself unable to see through the changed Lu Sheng. This transformation had occurred in a remarkably short span of time. Shaking his head, Zhang Zhengwo resolved not to dwell on things he couldn't comprehend. Lu Sheng thought to himself, finally, I have some money. Walking out of Zhang Zhengwu's office, he felt a little more at ease in his heart for the first time. 
of course, it would be wasteful to directly use this money to buy supplements. The best approach would be to purchase materials and make the tonics himself. Lu Sheng had recently obtained several tonic prescriptions from Fireseed, a kindling resource, and they were proving to be useful. Although these prescriptions were selected by the optical brain and could be realized in his era, determining which ones were suitable for the current Lu Sheng required further screening. The primary screening criterion at this stage was mainly cost. Lu Sheng found an internet cafe near the school and went online to calculate the cost of each prescription, identifying the most suitable ones based on cost effectiveness. Soon, Lu Sheng identified two medicines that were suitable for him muscle and blood enhancing potion, and bone nourishing pill. The constituent medicinal materials for these two tonics could be purchased on the market, and the prices were not expensive, falling within Lu Sheng's acceptable range. Although the effect of the bone nourishing pill was superior, Lu Sheng discovered that one of the medicinal materials needed to be freshly picked to be effective within a few hours, and its origin was not in Baihe City. Then I'll choose the muscle and blood enhancing potion. It happens that the preparation of this potion is relatively simple, suitable for a novice like me, Lu Sheng decided, firming his resolve. Now, there was only one question left for Lu Sheng to consider, where could he prepare the potion? Despite the simplicity of potion and medicine preparation, it required professional utensils. Even a slight difference in heat or dosage could significantly affect its effectiveness. Buying the set himself was unrealistic due to insufficient funds, making it best to rent someone else's equipment. Lu Sheng felt a sense of distress at this dilemma. Surely, there were places where drugs could be dispensed, such as drug research institutes, larger pharmacies, and pharmaceutical companies. However, the question remained, why would others rent their facilities to him? The blending room was an important space involving the commercial secrets of various pharmaceutical companies. It seemed implausible for individuals to enter casually, let alone borrow it for personal use. Forget it, Lu Sheng concluded. First, I'll buy all the medicinal materials needed for the muscle and blood enhancing potion, and then I'll think of a way. Sir, are you kidding me? It's absolutely impossible, the pharmacist exclaimed, his face darkening as Lu Sheng's request was met with disbelief. Sensing the pharmacist's reluctance, Lu Sheng swiftly got up and left the establishment. The seventh house is really unrealistic, Lu Sheng muttered to himself as he exited the pharmacy, his expression reflecting a sense of helplessness. Despite having procured all the necessary medicinal materials for the muscle and blood enhancing potion, and even purchasing several extras, Lu Sheng was faced with rejection after rejection. To his surprise, the amount on the car provided by Zhang Xingwo was not 30,000, but a generous 80,000. Speculating that the extra 50,000 might be Zhang Xingwo's private sponsorship, Lu Sheng found himself grateful for the unexpected support. However, the process of renting a compounding room proved to be far from smooth. Despite his efforts, Lu Sheng was turned away by seven pharmaceutical companies and pharmacies. With little options left, he contemplated resorting to purchasing crude equipment online. As his gaze fell upon the eighth pharmacy, Zheng Shantang, Lu Sheng straightened his clothes and steeled himself for another attempt. The rarity of the store name in Baihe City piqued his interest, prompting him to enter with determination. The pharmacy was small, with cabinets displaying various medicines. A young man in a white coat lounged on the counter, engrossed in his mobile phone. Upon hearing Lu Sheng's entrance, he briefly glanced up before returning to his screen. Feel free to browse, but remember to pay before leaving, he mumbled, adding a warning about the surveillance cameras in the store. With that, he resumed his phone activities, showing little interest in attending to customers. Lu Sheng observed the lackluster state of the store's business. Unlike other pharmacies where staff would engage customers, this clerk seemed disinterested, almost apathetic. Despite the uninviting atmosphere, Lu Sheng pressed forward, undeterred. Interrupting the young man's phone session, Lu Sheng's firm gaze caught his attention. Initially poised to retaliate, the young man softened upon meeting Lu Sheng's intense stare. What? Do you want? He finally asked, his demeanor subdued in the face of Lu Sheng's commanding presence. The young man took two quick steps back, casting fearful glances at Lu Sheng in his mobile phone. Lu Sheng, maintaining his calm demeanor, posed a question, Does your pharmacy have its own pharmacy dispensing room? Why do you ask? What if we do? replied the young man hastily, still uneasy. Lu Sheng lightly tapped the glass counter with a finger and continued calmly, If you do, I'd like to discuss a business opportunity with you. Five minutes later, Lu Sheng followed the young man to a door behind the pharmacy. 
The young man appeared nervous, reiterating the terms of their agreement. It's 500 for an hour, any time less will still be charged as an hour. You can use it for a maximum of three hours. And you'll need to pay 200 in advance. Lu Sheng simply handed over his card. The young man's eyes brightened as he swiftly swiped it, then retrieved a key to open the door. All right, go in quickly. Just be careful not to damage anything, or you'll be held responsible, he cautioned. I understand, Lu Sheng replied, stepping into the room. As the young man hurried back to the store, his joy was evident, despite his attempts to appear nonchalant. Lu Sheng inspected the room with satisfaction shining in his eyes. Although not large, the mixing room had all the necessary utensils, ample for his needs. It was evident that the pharmacists at Xingshantang took great care of these tools, as each one gleamed with spotless cleanliness. Without wasting any time, Lu Sheng got to work. The young man who had agreed to rent the room had no authority to intervene, and Lu Sheng was determined to achieve his goal swiftly. Donning a white pharmacist's uniform and a mask, Lu Sheng began processing the medicinal materials one by one according to the prescription instructions for the muscle and blood-enhancing potion. This step was crucial, even more so than the final mixing. Fortunately, the preparation of the potion was not overly complicated. It resembled an ordinary chemical experiment, albeit with a somewhat more intricate process. Carefully, Lu Sheng poured the boiled medicinal potion into a flask. I didn't expect the first time to go so smoothly, Lu Sheng thought to himself as he watched the liquid inside the flask gradually cool down, transforming into a beautiful light pink medicinal potion. A sense of satisfaction welled up within him, though true success could only be determined after experiencing its effects. Removing his mask, Lu Sheng tilted the flask and poured all its contents directly into his mouth. The potion flowed down his throat and swiftly into his stomach. He couldn't discern its taste, his focus solely on the impending effects. Waiting quietly for a few moments, Lu Sheng soon felt a surge of heat coursing through his body. It spread rapidly, reaching every corner within mere breaths. His muscle cells eagerly absorbed the energy, overwhelmed by the influx. Unable to withstand it any longer, Lu Sheng collapsed to the ground. A faint white mist emanated from his body as his blood surged, filling him with a sensation of fullness and vitality. After ten minutes, the sensation gradually waned and eventually disappeared altogether. However, Lu Sheng felt no adverse side effects. He knew he had succeeded. The effect of the muscle and blood-enhancing potion surpassed even his expectations, nearly ten times more potent than the nourishing blood powder he had previously consumed. What's more, its production cost was less than half that of the powder. Lu Sheng also noticed that his skin had become slightly firmer, as described in the prescription. In addition to strengthening the blood, the potion also enhanced skin density, reduced pores, and provided whitening and moisturizing effects. Reflecting on his success, Lu Sheng couldn't help but sigh with satisfaction. Suddenly, a loud bang on the door interrupted his thoughts. Lu Sheng opened the door with a blank expression as the young man outside urged him to hurry out, citing the imminent return of their boss. Without a word, Lu Sheng swiftly cleaned up the mixing room, gathered the prepared medicine, and exited. Thankfully, the preparation of the twelve muscle and blood-enhancing potions was completed without a hitch, marking a resounding success. Before departing, the young man generously shared his mobile number with Lu Sheng, indicating a willingness to engage in future business. It was evident that he intended to foster a long-term relationship. With twelve servings of the potion securely tucked away in his pocket, Lu Sheng's steps were confident and purposeful as he left the establishment. He Lingzu walked elegantly out of her car and approached her pharmacy. At only twenty years old, she possessed a graceful figure and a gentle countenance. While she should have been enjoying life like a flower, she had taken on the burden of her family's responsibilities at an early age. The He family had traditionally made a living through their pharmacy business, with ancestors who were renowned fifth-level pharmacists in Baihe City. However, by the time it reached her father's generation, the family's fortunes had declined. During her grandfather's time, the He family had flourished, with their Xingshantang branches spanning several provinces and numbering over a hundred. Yet now, only two branches remained in Baihe City. The world of martial arts is evolving rapidly, and the medical industry, intertwined with martial arts, is constantly changing. New and improved prescriptions are being developed daily, while old ones are being rendered obsolete. The reason for the He family's decline to this point lies in their conservative and outdated approach, adhering strictly to old traditions without considering progress. I don't even think about whether the martial arts tonic that was popular a hundred years ago can still sell well now.
At that time, many people couldn't even afford a pair of nourishing blood powder with a monthly salary. Only by bringing forth the new through the old is the best way to save my he family's current predicament, he Lingsu lamented. She had always followed this principle. Over the past period, she had tirelessly searched for a new martial arts tonic everywhere, hoping it could serve as a flagship product to revitalize the he family's business. However, after half a year of effort, little progress had been made. Just yesterday, she learned that an old pharmacist in the neighboring city had recently developed a new tonic, prompting He Lingsu to rush over immediately. Unfortunately, halfway through her journey, she received a call informing her not to come, as the new drug had already secured a partnership. Disheartened, He Lingsu returned home empty handed. Miss He, you're back. The young man in a white coat greeted her as soon as she entered. He Lingsu, Feeling dejected and preoccupied, merely nodded in response, lacking the energy to engage in conversation. Having managed the family's pharmacy for so long, she was well aware of the character flaws of the shop assistants. This particular clerk, named Ma Fei, was lazy, frequently late to work, and had even been caught stealing tonics from the store to sell. Despite several warnings, he showed no signs of remorse. If he Lingsu could find a suitable replacement, she would have dismissed Ma Fei without hesitation. It's a shame, you're so beautiful. If only you could be my girlfriend. Ma Fei's gaze lingered on He Lingsu's departing figure before reluctantly shifting away. He Lingsu had always been the object of Ma Fei's romantic fantasies. The reason he remained at Xinxiantang despite its dwindling business was because he harbored hopes that He Lingsu might one day return his affections. Though the odds of such a scenario were slim, it didn't dampen Ma Fei's dreams. After all, he saw it as the perfect combination of love and career, a pinnacle of life's achievements. Ma Fei was lost in his thoughts, sprawled across the counter, when suddenly He Lingsu's figure appeared before him once again. Ma Fei was jolted upright, hastily wiping the drool from the corner of his mouth with his sleeve. At that moment, He Lingsu's usually serene expression had transformed into one of icy displeasure, her features contorted with anger. Did you sneak someone into my pharmacy's mixing room? Ma Fei vigorously shook his head in denial, but the flickering uncertainty in his eyes betrayed him. He Lingsu, reading the signs, was almost certain of his guilt. Forget it, you don't have to come to work tomorrow, He Lingsu declared, her tone indifferent. Ah. Miss He, Miss He, please listen to my explanation. Ma Fei pleaded desperately, but He Lingsu ignored him, swiftly turning on her heel and exiting the scene. Already in a foul mood, encountering such an incident only fueled He Lingsu's frustration. In her free time, she often conducted research on new drugs in the lab, making her intimately familiar with every aspect of the compounding room. Upon entering the lab earlier, she immediately noticed signs of tampering. Items had been disturbed, and there was an unmistakable musky odor lingering in the air, a stark contrast to the room's usual sterile environment. Fuming with rage, He Lingsu began tidying up her movements sharp and purposeful. Snatching up the pharmacist's gown, now tainted with a foreign scent, she tossed it unceremoniously into the trash. All utensils must be washed again, and the table disinfected, she ordered briskly, her fastidious nature leaving no room for compromise. If circumstances permitted, she would have disposed of everything and procured a fresh set without a second thought. He Lingsu examined the remnants of the unused lizard scale, the most valuable ingredient, left behind by the person who had used her lab. She realized that many individuals were attempting to create their own tonics, but developing a new formula wasn't as simple as it seemed. It required thorough and in-depth research, not just a desire to create something new. He Lingsu's initial reaction was one of disgust as she noticed the used flask on the floor, containing remnants of a light pink liquid. Despite her grimace, she inexplicably found herself donning gloves to retrieve the flask from the ground. Then, against her better judgment, she tasted the liquid inside. She stood there, stunned by her own actions, momentarily speechless. Thought she laughed at herself, shaking her head in disbelief. Ten minutes later, Ma Fei was in the midst of departing. The prospect of no longer seeing the object of his infatuation, the goddess in his heart, filled him with regret. If only I hadn't been so greedy for a few extra bucks. You've doomed me, you brat, Ma Fei lamented to himself as he exited the pharmacy, casting a wistful glance backward. God, just let me have one more glimpse of my goddess. He prayed silently. To his utter disbelief, his wish seemed to be granted. He watched in astonishment as he linked so hurried towards him, her expression a mix of tension, anxiety, and urgency. Ma Fei couldn't believe his eyes. 
was his wildest fantasy actually coming true? The plots from those novels, once mere escapism, now appeared to be materializing before his very eyes. An overwhelming sense of joy and excitement surged within him as he eagerly called out, Lingsu. He Lingsu's eyes lit up at the sight of Ma Fei standing, waving enthusiastically. Without hesitation, she rushed towards him, seizing his clothes and speaking urgently, You're still here. This is perfect. I need to ask you something very important. Ma Fei's face brimmed with excitement and happiness as He Lingsu approached him. However, He Lingsu frowned at being addressed by Ma Fei, but she pushed aside her irritation, there were more pressing matters at hand. Who did you bring into the lab today? I need to see him. Right now. Immediately. He Lingsu demanded urgently. Ma Fei was taken aback, realizing that He Lingsu's reaction was quite different from what he had anticipated. Are you deaf? I said I want to see the person you brought into the mixing room today. Find him now. And if you can, I promise not only will you keep your job at Zingshantang, but I'll double your salary. He Lingsu's tone brooked no argument. Ma Fei quickly snapped out of his daze, reaching for his phone with a sense of urgency. I have his contact information, he said, his voice tinged with a hint of excitement. Give it to me. He Lingsu demanded, her impatience evident. Time was of the essence. He Lingsu's anxiety was fueled by the pharmacological analysis report she had just received, a report that was nothing short of astounding. The potency of this tonic is over ten times greater than similar products on the market costing less than 100,000 yuan. Not only that, it boasts additional benefits like whitening and muscle building. Moreover, its main components are common medicinal materials readily available on the market. And, based on initial estimates, the production cost is no more than 5,000 yuan. What's more, there's no existing tonic on the market with similar properties. In other words, it's a new product, a revolutionary tonic that's yet to hit the market. With all these factors considered, He Lingsu sensed an unprecedented business opportunity unfolding before her. The prospect of saving the He family's business seemed closer than ever before. Lu Sheng was deeply engrossed in his practice when the phone suddenly rang. The small room was nearly engulfed by the steam, resembling a sauna in full operation. Thick white vapor filled every corner, creating an atmosphere that would trick anyone stepping inside into thinking they had entered a steam room. The source of this vapor was none other than Lu Sheng himself. Every pore on his body seemed to emit intense heat, akin to a kettle nearing its boiling point. Amidst the hazy mist, the muscles on Lu Sheng's body trembled rhythmically, appearing to pulsate and expand with each breath. The latent power beneath his skin was palpable, even visible to the naked eye. After completing the final move, Lu Sheng remained seated, his chest rising and falling with each labored breath. Streams of white vapor flowed in and out of his nostrils and mouth, resembling ethereal serpents dancing around the room. After what felt like an eternity, the steam gradually dissipated, and Lu Sheng slowly opened his eyes. The stellar body refining technique truly lived up to its reputation as the most potent body refinement method of the future. It unlocked the human body's potential to unimaginable levels. If this progress continued, perhaps Lu Sheng might even cultivate a star within his body. The natural breathing method was equally remarkable. Its formidable recovery abilities were indispensable for maximizing the effects of body training. Lu Sheng clenched his fists, reveling in the newfound power coursing through his veins. With a sense of satisfaction, he acknowledged, my vitality has increased significantly. The muscle and blood enhancing potion has proven highly effective. Considering my current physique, two servings a day suffice, and any more would be excessive. With twelve servings, I have enough for six days. After that, I'll need to procure more. With a determined resolve, Lu Sheng prepared to embark on his journey toward further self-improvement. The sudden ring of his mobile phone interrupted Lu Sheng's contemplation. He picked it up to find He Lingsu on the other end, introducing herself as the owner of the lab he had rented earlier. She expressed interest in meeting him to discuss collaboration on the new tonic he had prepared. With calm composure, Lu Sheng responded, We can meet a week from now, before promptly hanging up the phone. Meanwhile, He Lingsu reinstated Ma Fei in charge of the pharmacy and tasked him with finding Lu Sheng as soon as possible. She even offered a reward of 10,000 yuan for each day Ma Fei successfully shortened the time it took to locate Lu Sheng in the coming week. In base 1359, Lu Sheng found himself standing in the middle of a desolate street, facing a tall zombie with a missing left arm and a gaping wound on its chest. As he gazed towards the gap in the city wall, the zombie turned its head towards him, signaling an imminent confrontation. 
Despite the apparent danger, Lu Sheng remained composed, taking a step forward to meet the oncoming threat. The one-armed zombie wasted no time and charged towards him with relentless speed. Despite being outmatched in strength, Lu Sheng remained focused, relying on his experience and skills to navigate the encounter. He deftly countered every attack with precision and efficiency, exploiting the zombie's weaknesses while avoiding its formidable strikes. Though the zombie possessed superior speed and strength, it was ultimately no match for Lu Sheng's strategic prowess. With a well-timed punch to its forehead, Lu Sheng delivered a devastating blow that caused the zombie's head to explode, bringing an end to the confrontation. As the zombie's body disintegrated, its accumulated experience and skills transferred to Lu Sheng in the form of a black wisp of smoke. With a solemn chant, Lu Sheng absorbed the essence of the fallen foe, further enhancing his own abilities. As Lu Sheng absorbed the memories of the fallen zombie, he felt a profound sense of duty weighing on his shoulders. No longer did he view these creatures simply as sources of experience points, but rather as reminders of the responsibility he carried. With each memory absorbed, Lu Sheng's commitment to his path grew stronger. The memory of the one-armed zombie revealed its former status as a fifth-level warrior, a formidable powerhouse skilled in the art of boxing. Lu Sheng couldn't help but marvel at the strength and skill contained within the zombie's recollections, realizing the impact it would have on his own training. After nearly a week of dedicated practice, Lu Sheng felt the effects of his regimen taking hold. Though unsure of his exact progress, he sensed a significant increase in his qi and blood levels, indicative of his growing power. Even if he hadn't reached the standards of a second-level warrior, his combat abilities were undoubtedly on par. Reflecting on the secret techniques he had uncovered, Lu Sheng devised a new method of exerting force, which he aptly named Stellar Force. This technique allowed him to unleash bursts of power far beyond his normal limits, multiplying his combat effectiveness several times over. Excited by the potential of his discovery, Lu Sheng realized that Stellar Force had the potential to revolutionize martial arts worldwide. With determination in his heart, he continued his journey, ready to explore the full extent of his newfound abilities. As Lu Sheng roused from his dream, he found himself surprisingly refreshed, his mind clear and alert. It was a sensation he had grown accustomed to, a side effect of cultivating within his dreams, where his mind and body could rest even as he trained. Taking advantage, Lu Sheng wasted no time in resuming his training regimen. With dedication, he delved back into the stellar body refining technique, the natural breathing method, and continued to hone his understanding of the crystal concept. After a week of diligent practice, Lu Sheng's efforts bore fruit. His progress in mastering the crystal concept was remarkable, as he succeeded in constructing a crystal human figure, an achievement that marked his entry into the realm of this advanced martial art. With each passing day, Lu Sheng felt himself growing stronger, both mentally and physically. Encouraged by his progress, he looked forward to the challenges that lay ahead, confident in his ability to overcome them. Lu Sheng glanced at the clock and realized it was still early, just past eight in the morning. With a thought, he decided it was time to assess his current chi, blood, and combat power. If his measurements met the standard, he could proceed with the warrior assessment. Making his way to Hongshan Vuguin, Lu Sheng approached the front desk to rent the necessary test equipment. The receptionist, a pretty young woman, greeted him with a smile. Back again so soon, huh? She quipped, her tone playful. Midterm exam worries? Lu Sheng was momentarily taken aback by her familiarity, then quickly understood. Indeed, this wasn't his first visit this month. His rapid growth and strength had prompted more frequent visits than usual, though such frequency was unusual for most. In the world of martial arts, where fluctuations in qi and blood played a crucial role, testing too frequently could lead to inaccurate results. Even the most rigorous institutions typically conducted monthly exams, recognizing the need for sufficient time between tests to allow for meaningful changes in strength to manifest. With a wry smile, Lu Sheng could only offer a vague and perfunctory response, acknowledging the unique circumstances of his accelerated growth. As Lu Sheng entered the familiar testing room, he casually located an instrument, deciding to begin with a blood test. With a soft beep, the machine swiftly produced a result. 15.632 the figure caught Lu Sheng off guard, prompting a surprised reaction. He hadn't anticipated such a significant increase. Reflecting on his recent regimen, he realized the combination of the advanced martial arts techniques from the future and the potent tonics had likely contributed to this remarkable growth. Considering the unparalleled benefits bestowed upon him by these advancements, it was no wonder his progress exceeded expectations.
Let's test the combat power again, Lu Sheng declared with a glint in his eyes, gearing up to deliver a powerful punch at the force measuring instrument. Test the normal setting first, he muttered to himself as he aimed his fist at the instrument. With a resounding boom, a value promptly appeared on the screen of the force measuring instrument, 3137. The figure took Lu Sheng by surprise, far surpassing his expectations. It was double the standard value, leaving him momentarily stunned. Perhaps it's because of my improved boxing skills, he mused, tracing the source of the significant increase in his combat power. He recalled that he hadn't tested his combat power since his boxing techniques had advanced to a new realm, likely contributing to the remarkable surge. Realizing the potential implications of this newfound strength, Lu Sheng's excitement grew. Eager to explore further, he decided to test his ultimate combat power, employing the stellar force technique this time. Emerging from the dynamometer room moments later, Lu Sheng maintained his calm demeanor, betraying no hint of emotion. Is the test over? Are you satisfied with the results? The girl at the front desk inquired cheerfully. Lu Sheng smiled faintly, his charm accentuated by his composed demeanor. Very satisfied, he replied. Returning her smile, the girl at the front desk couldn't help but remark, then I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. Thank you, Lu Sheng responded, waving casually as he made his exit from the martial arts hall. As Lu Sheng neared the door, he noticed a tall, graceful woman walking alongside a young man of similar age, both of them passing by him. The woman was Ni Shuang, the daughter of Hong Chuan, the director of the martial arts academy. Observing his departure, the girl couldn't help but admire, you may act aloof, but you have a charming smile. Who are you talking about? Ni Shuang inquired as they passed by. Just a student renting an instrument for testing, probably from a nearby high school, the young man beside her replied casually, glancing at Lu Sheng walking out the door. Students like that, who can't even afford their own tester at home, probably won't score very well, Ni Shuang remarked with a glance back at Lu Sheng. The young man, with fair skin and a somewhat handsome appearance, smiled knowingly. His attire suggested a higher level of refinement than that of typical households, and his demeanor exuded a natural sense of superiority. Perhaps, Ni Shuang agreed, though she couldn't shake off a slight discomfort from the boy's tone. Nonetheless, she acknowledged the truth in his observation. In martial arts practice, resources play a significant role. A child from a prosperous family benefits from consuming various supplements since childhood. Ni Shuang hesitated for a moment, pondering whether to comply with the young man's request. She knew his intentions were more about boosting his ego than genuine curiosity about the other student's performance. The object of comparison should be the top students, not ordinary people, she reminded him sternly, hoping to deter him from pursuing this line of thought. However, the young man persisted, driven by his desire to assert his superiority. I just want to increase my self-confidence, seeing your sister Ni, please. He pleaded, appealing to her sense of compassion. Relenting, Ni Shuang finally agreed to check the test results. With a hint of satisfaction, the young man smirked, reveling in the prospect of confirming his assumptions. That guy is as thin as a bamboo pole, and his blood value is probably not even one. He should be a little older than me. He he. The young man muttered, relishing in his moment of perceived superiority. As the data appeared on the screen, the young man's expression underwent a sudden and dramatic change. Frozen in disbelief, he stared fixedly at the numbers, as if unable to comprehend what he was seeing. Then, breaking the silence with a shout of astonishment, he exclaimed, That guy! Can his blood value be so much higher than mine? Ni Shuang, too, was taken aback by the revelation. The assumptions she had made about the student moments ago were shattered in an instant. The young man she had dismissed as malnourished and from a poor family turned out to be an exceptional talent. Struggling to process the revelation, Ni Shuang's expression shifted from shock to incredulity. She couldn't reconcile the image she had formed of the student with the reality presented by the test results. Doubt crept into her mind, and she found herself questioning the reliability of the instrument. This instrument? Could it be malfunctioning? She mused, her tone tinged with uncertainty. The girl at the front desk, shaken by the unexpected turn of events, chimed in, impossible, it was overhauled yesterday. Her response was swift and firm, emphasizing the instrument's recent maintenance and dismissing any doubts about its accuracy. That means... Ni Shuang paused, taking a deep breath in an attempt to steady her racing thoughts. This achievement is real, she concluded, her voice carrying a mixture of surprise and acceptance. 
the girl at the front desk nodded, her expression reflecting the shock of the unexpected revelation. Now, immediately, find me the boy who just tested. Let everyone go. Ni Shuang's tone was urgent, her command leaving no room for hesitation. He often comes to our Hongchan martial arts school, he must not live far away. There must be someone nearby who knows him. Go. Yes, seeing your sister Ni. The girl at the front desk responded promptly, her previous bewilderment replaced by a sense of purpose as she rushed to carry out Ni Shuang's directive. With this, the chapter concludes. Don't miss out on the next installment. Hit that subscribe button and join us for the continuation of Lu Sheng's remarkable story.